Okay, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the stages that I took starting my smart home automation business from zero experience. So starting as a full-time employee and then the journey and transition and timeline and steps that I took over about year and a half, two years, going from full-time employee to full-time business owner and the stages in between. So let's dive in. So first of all, I was just a full-time employee, you know, standard employee, um, yeah, working Monday to Friday. So that's what, that's what I looked like. And then I decided I wanted to start doing some private jobs. You know, I, do, I had the skill set, I knew what I was doing, so I was like, right, okay, I wanna start making a bit more money and I wanna start moving towards, um, yeah, becoming a business owner or, you know, a, a contractor. I wanted to make some extra money on the side. And this is, this is how I did it. So I stayed as a full-time employee and I also set up as a sole trader. So I did private jobs on the weekends and after work, predominantly weekends, like it was very occasionally that I did stuff after work. So I was doing my, my full-time employment role. Um, I got myself some tools, uh, well, I already had some tools, but hopefully this illustrates the point that we're, we're investing a little bit now into, into us and our business. And then I started adding some additional days, so Saturday, Sunday. So that was like the first step. And then what I did is, I negotiated with where I was at to go part-time. So I dropped down to three days a week. So I was doing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday as an employee. And then the rest of the time I was dedicating to you know, my own thing, still as a sole trader and doing more private jobs, you know, being able to do, dedicate more days to it working weekends and after work. So again, I didn't really invest any more in tools and equipment, um, but I, I invested more time. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's what I invested into my own business. And yeah, started making more money because I had more time to invest. And then the next thing is after doing that for a while, I was just like, well, this is, I've, I've got enough opportunity and work and contacts and it was it was reliable enough you know I wasn't raking it in but it was reliable enough um, to go full town full time self-employed um, and as a self-employed contractor and this is where I, I landed my first 12 month contract um, where I'm, I'm really on day rate work so it was like day rate for 12 months 12 month contract and this is where you start making a bit more money, you know, a bit more money for yourself. But obviously you have to, you have to invest a little bit more in like tools and equipment. So I invested a, in a van at this stage because I was delivering control panels to sites. Um, but now I, I, I got back my weekends if I chose, if I wanted to. Um, and now I was just doing day rate contract work for this other business that I was subbing to. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And there was actually some flexibility in this um, where I could also do my, my own private jobs as well. You know, I wasn't tied to doing five days a week with them. It was pretty flexible. So some days I would do five days, some days I would do, you know, four days, three days. You know, it was very flexible. Then the next phase, and is this the last phase? No, it's not the last phase. So then the next phase is then... I set up, so I finished that, uh, that that 12 month contract. I didn't, God, brain, come on. I didn't renew it. And I went basically, this is when I then set up as a limited company. And this is where I was not doing day rate work, but I was actually doing project work. And then things like installation work, I was subbing out to contractors, electrical contractors. They were doing all the install work. So I still got my tools, but I, I'm not, I'm upgrading to a Tesla. If I, if only I had a Tesla, that would make me a happy man one day. But you see my point, you're, not, you're less reliant on, um, you know, doing like the, I suppose what I'm trying to illustrate here is I'm no longer doing like install, like hard graft work, laborious work, um, 
labour intensive work. It's more like now managing the business and managing subcontractors and and yeah, that's kind of what that's indicating. And this is where you start making more money. So we've got an extra bag of money here. And because we're doing project work, we're we're not just trading our time for money doing day rate stuff. We're actually making profit margin off selling projects. So this is what I'm I'm illustrating here. This is like a a, a project, you know, say a home home automation project. But what you find is your your time ends up getting well, you end up investing more time. So like you end up working Saturdays and, and Sundays even. So that was kind of like the next progression. Now where I'm at at the moment, well, I'm not actually quite here yet, um, but we're, we're, I'm obviously running a slightly different business now. So this is kind of how it would look like, um, but the team members that I've got are, are doing other things because we're running a, another type of business. But as you can see, this is where you start taking on team members. So what, what it might look like if you're running a, a controls and automation business is you're taking on larger project work, so illustrated by this hotel, and you're now able to leverage other people's energy and time to, to do the work for you. And you're not necessarily subbing out the work. So it depends obviously, but you could argue if you've got if you've got regular recurring work and you're able to put these team members to work every day and they're able to be productive and generate you revenue, it's it's more affordable to have team members than subbing subbing it out to you know to contractors that charge higher day rates. These guys are on like predictable salaries, but they're they're the ones now that are doing doing the work. You're you're no longer needed for you don't need your tools anymore. You're off the tools. Um, and you still got your nice Tesla. And as you can see, like the time is pretty much the same as it was at the last phase. So this is kind of like the progression. And then this kind of just scales from here. You know, you get bigger projects, you get more money, and you get, you know, more more team members that, that work with you. Um, at least that's how I see it going. I'm obviously no, I'm not past this point yet, so I don't I don't know. You might have divisions you know uh, and the hierarchy of of the team changes and you might have different locations and different countries but it's ultimately it's just scale now <clears throat> so hopefully that that illustrates sort of what becoming a business owner looks like you don't just jump straight into this point or you don't just jump straight here or even you don't just well, you might jump straight into being a self-employed contractor. I know a lot of people do that. But for most people that start as employees, you know, it goes employee, it goes sole trader slash employee, doing private jobs on the side, to then going part-time employee and doing more sole trader private jobs. <clears throat> and this is, when I say private jobs, this is not just typically day rate jobs, not necessarily project work. Again, you're sort of then doing like, you might be doing some project work, but for me, I was just doing day rate work, but I was now on like fixed 12 month contract. And then you set up a limited company and this is where you start getting more project work. You might still be doing some day rate work here as well, but it's kind of like a, it's a transition. And then you ultimately end up here where you've got a team of people, you're off the tools and you're leveraging their time and energy to make you more money. And then you grow the business. And that's kind of the progression path that I've taken and I'm pretty much at this point here now.